been three and a half years since I worked in television. Things have changed. I've changed slightly. One of the main changes, as you probably noticed, there is no ashtray. I have given it up. I, a heavy smoker, I used to even smoke in between smokes. <laughs> have given it up. Totally changed. And the most extraordinary thing about giving up smoking, to non-smokers, I'm, I'm a convert. I'm a, I've come over. I've joined them. They're proud of me. They say, good for you. You've given up the filthy habit. Good, 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 good. <laughs> the heavy smokers who used to be my allies, I'm a traitor. Bloody Judas. <laughs> you of all people. But one of the, one of the good things, or one of the new things about giving up smoking, is that I now have my sense of smell back. I can actually get up in the morning and open a window, throw it up and, and breathe it. And smell again. Petrol. <laughs> Carbon monoxide. Dog shit. <laughs> Taste. I actually thought when I used to eat food, it was the smoking. It was a, I had no taste. It's not the smoking, it's the food. <laughs> it's bloody tasteless. <laughs> Somebody said to me the other day, shall we eat or have a McDonald's? <laughs> and now the whole, the whole thing about being a smoker, actually being a smoker is, is very difficult in, in today's society because the pressures are on smokers. Society frowns upon smokers. There are signs everywhere. See them here. No smoking. Smoking is not allowed. Smoking is forbidden. The Americans, they're totally lunatic about it. When I, when I was in America, I was smoking. And a woman stopped me in the street and she said, you're smoking. <laughs> like I'd exposed myself. <laughs> I said, yes, madam. She said, you have a cigarette in your mouth. I said, I know. I've been smoking for years. That's the only way I know how. <laughs> You notice in, in, in public, if you actually spit, if you spit in the street, you can be fined 25 pounds. If your dog fouls the footpath, 20 pounds. But the cost of a smoke, or what it would cost you if you're caught smoking, can be 50 pounds. Now that means that you can actually have a good spit. <laughs> Your dog can crack to his heart's content, <laughs> and you've still got a fiber to take home. <laughs> when I started smoking, I was, I was actually four and a half. I did actually start to keep up with my, my brothers, who were slightly older. I had one brother of six and one of was eight. And they, were heavy, <laughs> they were heavy smokers. So I used to keep up with them to smoke. I'm four and a half. I'm this size. And people would say, It'll stunt your growth. <laughs> lavatory. I mean, everybody in school smoked. As soon as it was a school break, we'd all go for the lavatory. In the cubicle. Eight or nine of us in each cubicle. <laughs> passing this little cigarette. <laughs> if you went out and looked down the line of cubicles, it was like the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> Somebody used them for what they intended to use. It was like a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Remember going to the cinema years ago when there was no smoking regulations? Everybody in the cinema smoked. It was just a mass of smoke. You go in, you go. <laughs> and when you got to the screen and you could see the screen, there were people on the screen. Go, <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember those, those scenes, the, the seduction scenes? How the cigarette was, was played with? It became part of a kind of hand phallic symbol. <laughs> people used to kind of touch it and stroke it and rub it. <laughs> Women would kind of put it into the mouth and take it out again. The whole audience would... <laughs> They used to have those, those cigarette cases that you could buy that actually you pressed a button and, and one cigarette came out all by itself. It was, it was a sexual invitation. You'd hand it out and you'd go, and the cigarette would go... <laughs> and if the woman went... <laughs> you, you... Do we, have, do we have any smokers here? Yeah. Yes. That's the extraordinary thing about smoking, is that 
when you, when you make love, do you... <laughs> you answered me about smoking. <laughs> do, do, you, do you smoke after you've made love? I don't mean literally, I mean... <laughs> I mean, most smokers, you make love. I love you, darling. That, you, oh, yes, oh, yes, that was beautiful. Oh, yes, you are marvelous. It was wondrous. It was, oh, yeah. And you, and you, you can't get to the... <laughs> Can we do it again? Yes, just give me... <laughs> a few years, a couple of years ago, I decided, I actually decided, I don't think from pressure or anything else, I decided I would, I would give up smoking because I have teenage children and I knew that one day my teenage children were going to come in smoking. And I didn't actually think that I could be hypocritical enough to, to sit there and watch them go, and I'm going, don't do that. <laughs> don't be happy. Give it to me. I'll, I'll, I'll. <laughs> and I woke up one morning, it was 8 o'clock in the morning, and I sat there and I thought, that's it. This is actually the day I would give up smoking. And then I thought, well, I don't really want to give it up. What you should actually do is cut it down. What you should do is actually think. You'll only smoke when you enjoy smoking, because you like smoking, you get a certain pleasure out of it. But instead of it being unhealthy, what you should do is just, just take the moments that you really get the most enjoyment, and that's the time you smoke. And I, when, when, do you, when do you enjoy smoking most? I thought to myself, after a meal, when I've had a meal, that's when I enjoy smoking. It's fine, you can have 12 a day. <laughs> I'm actually sitting there, 8 o'clock in the morning, going, fine, 12, that's good. Right, I'm thinking of 12 cigarettes, 12, it'll, it's 8 o'clock now. I won't go to bed before 12 o'clock tonight. It's 16 hours, 12 cigarettes. 12, it's an hour, an hour and 20 minutes for every cigarette. I'm going to finish that one. It's only three minutes past eight. <laughs> I've only got 11 cigarettes. My wife comes in, good morning, I shut up! <laughs> Who's going to drive the children? Bella! Get the walk! <laughs> Twelve o'clock noon, I have gone through nine cigarettes. I'm a lunatic. That's a rat over. Come on, it's twelve hours! Oh, God, I'm going to get through the twelve hours. Please help me, please help me. Hang on, wait, wait, wait. You, don't, you have some cigarettes. You've got three cigarettes left over. That's four hours smoking. You can cut them in half. <laughs> then I'm thinking, that'll be two dog ends. There'll be two butts. I'll be throwing away more cigarettes. I don't, no, wait, wait, wait. Wait. I'm trying to explain myself. Now, here I have been a smoker since I was so big. I am now going through the first withdrawal symptoms I have ever gone through in my life. So I said, I explained this. I said, listen, listen, wait, calm down. You are actually experienced withdrawal symptoms. This is your first time. It's difficult, we know it, but you've got to persevere. Tomorrow, it's not going to be as so difficult. Because you'll have experienced what it is today, so tomorrow it won't be so bad. But you'll still have 12 cigarettes tomorrow, and you won't need those 12 cigarettes tomorrow. You'll probably only need five or six or four. So take those eight today and... <laughs>